Abu Chamegan Yame. Kagu Nimegan Ame. Try, 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 Omanyava. Menashi me. Menashi so. Nima so. Now, Bomau. Mene, but only a walker. Mene won't be walla. Won't be walla. Can have be a hoy. I cannot feel it when my no feel it when my long men no bar. But then Charlie no new bar. I can walk chair, bar wheelie. A choice say. Sanya draw a. She no new or your no bar fee here. What fee? I cannot feel a heart at the no no I feel a heart at the long men no bar. I get one ball at all. Or can thank the community. Ni your man name. Could you not fair no ahi? You know fair no, I am no, would you bar? Hey, Pauli, go on ye. No go on your bar. Can my brother be mad? Come on, you meet you. Come on, you meet ni won bo ba to he no ya wo temboko e ya ko je ntan ti won le ake ke bu den cho gbele o ya no e ko ti e o ba gba ami no ni potin o na e je ne ni o ya yu e no ko no na no le ake 
Shake <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And he who believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. He will live, he will live, point to the Lord. And when we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of all the dead and the living. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I am unto an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we are not here this afternoon to never before our brother, father, grandfather, and a friend, William Joseph Nivera Lutrons. To thank God for his life and to commend him to God, his merciful Redeemer and judge to commit his body to be buried and to comfort one another in our grave. And the hope that his hour is true the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Shall we sing the first song? And now, Abu, yeah. Wow. Wow.
your son who you brought into this world and he accomplishes work here now he is with you we give you the glory and the praise thank you also for the family that he left behind and we ask that the Lord continue to console and comfort them we ask for your presence to be with us as uh, we continue with this service we give you the glory the amen. Amen. amen amen so as you know um, we have come to uh, celebrate the life of uh, dear father, brother, and uh, um, a lot of people have not really come in contact with him, but he has affected and been an influence to a lot of groups and in this uh, nation. And that's the reason why we are here this afternoon. So we want to continue with a uh, Bible reading. Uh, from uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, Mr. Bruce, you can come and give us a Bible reading. Yeah, 
enyo mo ko ko ni mo fe mo ana ni ni ife egbo mo cho mi nle enyo mo ko bobo ni ife ile e papa ji o e fun ji o o cho ni na ji
from uh, some of the family and friends. Uh, can we call on Brother Reginald to come and give this tribute? <coughs> First night, I first met Howard Lynn Axel back to the court in the uh, late 1980s. And the company of a friend of his called them <coughs> one profit. <coughs> when you talk uh, about it, the response is Bomo, Yemi, Bomo, Man, Brother, the Man. When you okay, I don't think. <laughs> I love the African man. I would think was friendly and approachable with a good sense of humor. Always with a smile on his face. He always enjoyed discussing dining politics, both formal and care, as well as the conversation on the convention people. In the 1990s, this young man of London there sponsored one of our members by the name of Frank Renfro Boy, musician, who was acquainted with our belief. Mr. Renfro Boy invited our to two of his life and one in French right and one in the moon. And when Paoli took us to the floor on both occasions, on both occasions, he never named the floor. He shows, I think, uh, uh, the pictures in this thing on the program to bear testimony to his movement and what's all. He took interest in the Dan Dummy Foundation, which at the time met at Patchway Church. It was at this time that he expressed aspiration of visiting Dan. That's why that he, had, he said he had no living record today. Probably, the Almighty God who called him. Renounce her weight on you and give you a cup of food. Yeah, what you are. We call on the niece uh, Tina Quay to give a tribute. Oh. Mister, to say believe that. Your blue letter cards 
brought excitement to all. And as a young girl, I treasured you a, a secret desire that if I ever get to England, I will surely find opening. And as it was not to be, since the correspondence with the passing of me in the 1970s, and with that, a loss of contact. In England, with four family pictures that you sent, but one in particular stands out. In it, you were beaming with joy and pride as you cradled a bundle of joy in your arms. And at the back, at the back, a caption christening at the family. Where there's today's social media, then I would have been able to find you. Sadly, my desire to meet you in person was not fulfilled. As the years went by, and with the passing of the three of your younger siblings and me, the family were at pain as to your welfare and faith, but lived in hope that by Reconnect. I thank the Almighty that your passing, your passing on to rest in peace, in his benevolence, has in many ways reconnected us with you and brought a closure to the family. On behalf of the Lutrot family and the Quashis family, I thank the God and the Lukasimasa and the Lagi Nemes for rallying selflessly to organize a fitting send-off to Bawi. I am particularly grateful to Mr. Adi Sawyer, Mr. Bekango, Mr. Daniel Evans Lutrot, Mr. Daniel Sisu, to name a few among many for their tireless effort in this regard. The family sincerely thank Ms. Dada Ashi for the care and devotion the welfare of Bawi in the twilight years of his long life. For your humanity towards our dearly departed. Nayeko, Uncle Ni, you were much loved and will always be remembered. Rest in peace. We hear the final treatment from the very close friend of Bawile Dada Ashi, if she's here. So, um, I used to be an executive member of um, uh, LAFA, you know, the part of the events team. And uh, we used to put on a uh, home walk at uh, Tottenham Green Leisure Centre. So I was there doing my work and doing my job and doing what I could. And I spotted this gentleman in the background, um, very dapper, um, with his batakali, his sunglasses and his hat. I thought, who's that? So I got talking to him and um, he said he wanted a. Uh, how do you say it? Um, I thought, can you tell him what the man is doing? So I said, okay, I got him. And that's how it started. So I got him a drink. And then um, we got chatting. And after some time, he asked me my name. He told him my name. He said, oh, he said, uh, your father was my best friend, you know. I said, he said, yes. That's an Ashley McQueen. I said, oh, really? He said, yes. He said, I'm so sorry. I didn't get to hear about his passing. I said, oh, it's okay. So from then on, we had a friendship, and I used to call him. And um, he said he likes being with uh, my people. He called it my people. So I said, okay, well, that way we have lots of events happening, and um, I will invite you. So he came to our Christmas parties. Uh, he also came to the Ghana uh, Independence Day dance. He loved that. And um, 
But after some time, his body was giving up on him and he couldn't walk so much. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact time that he gave me, but could you respect me to tell me that I can't make it? Something like that. Um, because he's, you know, he just couldn't, he couldn't really walk. So I said, okay, I'll tell them. But they always asked for him. And um, I always told him he was really happy to know that he hadn't been forgotten. So over the years, I would say about five years ago, he, um, he got dementia. Um, but it would come and go. Being such a smart man, I could see him fighting it. Um, but you know, it came. And his legs were giving up, and he loved to read. He loved to read, but devour the newspaper like five minutes flat. And then tell me everything that was in it. Um, and his eyesight started to go. And then he was becoming more and more frustrated because he couldn't walk, he couldn't see, and his memory. And he just was really frustrated the whole time. And it was really hard to see this. And he loved, before this happened, he loved to go to the shops, you know, with his trolley and his hat and his everything. He was very smart. And people used to stop him in the street and ask who this gentleman was and want to help him in the street. But anyway, he lost that independence. And at home, he became very frustrated. And um, he used to fall. Luckily, he never really hurt himself, but he used to fall. Uh, quite often, I think one year they said it, you know, he pressed the alarm bell about 84 times in a year, which is too much. So one time he fell, was taken to hospital just for a checkup, and they said, no, they can't take him back to um, back to where he was because he's on his own. Even though he had four carers, um, it, it was too dangerous. So one Friday, they, just, they found somewhere for him. And it was in Romford. He's in Haringey, but this is in Romford. And so on the Saturday, he ends up in Romford. And I get a call that they found a place for him in Romford. So I go to see him on the Sunday. He said, I don't understand this. Why am I in Romford? I said, well, they couldn't find anywhere else to be closer to Haringey. He said, no, I don't like it. I don't want to be here. I said, OK. It went to about six months to be able to get him back to uh, Haringey. And the home that he stayed in, the manager, uh, it's a Ghanaian lady, Marty, I can't remember her surname. But she really took care of him and we used to get him his in the floor, which he loved and everything. Um, so when uh, I cleared out his, his former place, I, the manager just gave me some numbers. So I called some numbers, uh, I think people passed on or whatever, but I managed to get hold of somebody who put me in touch with um, Auntie Dolly. So I ran off I managed to speak to her, and the next day she went to the home, but unfortunately she couldn't see him because she hadn't taken her COVID test. Um, so she went, within two days, she went back, and uh, they said, oh, um, he's, he's not here, he went to hospital. So he went to hospital, and um, turns out that he, his gallbladder had been leaking for years and nobody had picked it up. So because of his age, he couldn't be operated on. And um, so they were going to just drain it and give him antibiotics. And they said to me that because of his age, obviously they can't operate it. I said, fine, we'll do what we can. So he was with them for about an hour, uh, sorry, I'm like, for, for about a month, um, put it in the hospital. And then he was transferred back to uh, the home. And he wasn't quite himself, so he was there for about a month or so. Um, and then he went back into the hospital. And, Unfortunately, he left us, it's a little shame. But uh, there's certain people that um, kept in touch with him and he loved that, he loved to hear, hear from them and that kept him going. And uh, yeah, it was a very interesting time and I'm going to miss him. But um, I really believe he's found peace now. So I believe, rest in peace. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much, sir. Some of us did not come to see him, but a few people were able to contact him, had a feeling of, of compounding, and here we are today celebrating his life. Um, shall we sing the bear again? What's the occasion do in town?
much about uh, a man God blessed with 99 years on earth. I believe he was just so blessed. And the tributes given about him, his social life, his influences, once he hears of an organization, the father come from Ghana, he tried to be part of it. And I'm believing that the real reason why some of us are here uh, this afternoon. By times like this, I believe that we try to encourage ourselves with the word of God. The first reading that was read to us, Paul speaks about another body that we are going to live in after this body that we have. In fact, he made reference to this body as a tent. He said, we are in a tent. I mean, those who have been boys will get and get and get and those who are going to campaign, you know, campaign, uh, we use tents. And, and tents are not uh, building, they are temporary uh, accommodation where you have the winds coming and the rains and the storms and before you realize, you know, the tent is destroyed. So the Apostle Paul is uh, likening us to this tent because in this body we have groanings, we have problems and then we have to take our tablets just to keep us going. But after some time, this body decays, breaks down, and finally this body dies. And here we are uh, uh, celebrating life of uh, our here. God blessed him with 99 years. But he has departed, the Bible says, absent from this world, is present with God. So we know that he has gone to his maker. But is that, that, is that the end of man? That's not the end of man. There's more to, to, to man's life than is after death. You know, when we go and sleep, we dream. Our soul and our spirit still working. So, our spirit and our soul never dies. It moves on. Paul says, we have another building. He's not talking about tent. Another building not made with hands. It's a building that God made for children of God. But for all of us, that when we depart from this place, there is a building by the second coming of Jesus Christ where we, we are going into our resurrection bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. So, death is not the end of man. As we read in the, in the second uh, scripture, Say, remember thy creator, the days of thy youth, when the evil days have not yet come. Because there will be a time when we have no pleasure in the things that we do. Why do we have to remember our creator? Because we have to give praise, we have to worship him, we have to please God. So in times like this, we're just trying to remind ourselves that we don't live in this world forever. Yes, that there are a lot who like talking, speaking so much about this world, but not about the other world because 
nobody wants to die. But trust me, everybody will die. But when you die, where are you going? Hallelujah. So, the word to us is, there is a building that God Almighty is prepared for us. And this building, we are going to fit into this building at the second coming when Jesus Christ comes again. But Paul tells us that when people die now, they are with the Lord. They use the word, they are unclothed. They are with the Lord, but they are unclothed. Because they have to put on that uh, uh, clothing that do not decay. Praise God. Our brother is now with the Lord. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, those who are in the Lord, who are sleeping in the Lord, Bible says the dead face who will arise, and we who are still living, we caught up with Jesus in the air. That is where that transformation will come, and then we put on these new bodies, what we call the rapture. So, there is life after death, and that is what we have to look to. I know people don't want, again, people don't want talking too much about after death, but there's life after death, and that's what we have to look for, because in this body, we have groanings and groanings and groanings, and, and it gets to a time we have pains, and it gets to a time when this body is totally destroyed. It goes into the grave, but the spirit and the soul goes to the Father, waiting for that day when Jesus comes again and then when we put on immortality. But the Bible tells us that we will face that judgment seat of Jesus Christ. So, at the thing that we have done in this body, we are going to account for it. Remember, in, in, in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, God said, Go and be fruitful and then multiply. Yes, people are fruitful and fruitful in so many areas of life. God bless us. But he said, And multiply. What are you multiplying? You are multiplying what God has given unto you. The grace he has given you, the, the talent, what God has given unto you, you are going to account for it. You know, Jesus told a, 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 a parable and says that uh, a man traveled and gave talents to his uh, servants. He said, one went and dug a hole and kept it there. And so when the master came, he told the master, you know, I knew you were not a good master. You just gave me one and went and kept that one. All of us have to account for our lives before the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is going to say to us, good and faithful servant. If you have been faithful about few things, come, I'm going to make you a master of many things. We are talking about power here. But power is not here, it's with the Lord. But this message is to us, that we are in a building that decays, a building that can be destroyed and will be destroyed, but our spirit and our soul <coughs> goes on. So you have to think, where is my spirit going? Where is it going to the Lord? Yes, yeah, going to the Lord. He said, my father's house, there are many mansions. If I have told you, I will prepare a place for you. After I prepare this place, I will come and take you home to myself. If you are here before the Lord, what accountability are you going to give to the Lord? You know, finally, those in Jesus Christ, we are not going to account for the, the sin that we have done, things that we have. 
Jesus Christ on the cross, he paid for everything. So when you appear before the judgment seat of Christ, you are going to be rewarded for the things that you have done in this point. That's the reason why it's important for you and I to believe in Jesus. You will not live in this life forever. But when Jesus Christ has not paid for your sins and uh, you have to pay for your own sins, that's where the problem is. Hallelujah. Okay. So in times like this, remind ourselves of heaven, that there is a place called heaven where God is expecting that when we have finished our work, we should come back. We are here to prepare ourselves for heaven. Hallelujah. We didn't be uh, powerly, but uh, a lot of people met him and we heard of the children, the testimonies about him.
If you come to Heritage Site, you can You can watch it.
Send it to me again, please. I've been, um, I'm, atten I'm attending a, I'm I'm attending a private game, a private game as we speak. So could we do it later today, please? Um, um, what time do you have to come one o'clock? Okay for now. Yeah. You're right here. Yeah. Okay. Boy. The flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
come here this afternoon to commend the departed William Joseph D. Vera Luttrop to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. A man that is born of a woman but had just a short time to live and is full of mystery, coming out and is cut down like a flower and fled as just were a shadow and never return in one stay. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Channel thy merciful ears to our prayer. But spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. Amen. Amen. Our beloved brother William Joseph D. Vera Lutrot. We therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working whereby is able and to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you. We give you the praise and the glory for your goodness. And you love your son and you brought him into this world. 
You created him with a dust. And dust. He is in now. We thank you for his spirit and soul that is with you. The word say you go to prepare a place for him. And after you have prepared this place, you come and take him unto yourself. You know he's now resting, Lord, in your bosom. We thank you, my God, for the family. We thank you for friends and all who has come here to bid farewell to this good man of ours. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for his life and thank you for those, my God, of us that he has left behind. We give all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, if you make a book, you will be able to get a book. Be oba ke wo na gbe solemo. Wo cheke wo nyo bo wo da wo shi. Wo da comfortable wo joy. Ye o ba nu pawili o kile ba ni ke wa la nemi. E ba chu eni egbe na. O ba to he ko wo han le. Ni de joy here. Okay, o yuru adon ye wa la he wo. 
wonder machine ye men fe ni na higbe ni amekle shran titri wonye mi yo dada ni enye kle shran hu kata e e na gbe bi amen wo ke yo ra don wonder machine le hu ye kui kui ni e na gbe ni ka mi shran ni do hewo no fe won na e ba pese e bi e wo ka mi yo ra don wonder machine e ju ji baba o no o fi o ha wo hewo wo bi bu akisi wala ni o ngo hale ne afi nyu mai ne hu ke ne hu wo bi akisi no cho o ngo na kan afi o ha wo le hu bena bena afi ko ne wo nye ni chubolo ku afu wo hie ne ke wala na emi e wo je wo tu fi wo gbena o jo ba wo ko yoro adon ye yesu christo be mri amen ni awon ka jo mo yue mo wo nun cho yesu christo dromo na nyo bo so mo e mo kron kron na nyo bo e ke wo fe ahisi gbe ne keda amen Okay, you could let you in a very short time. But my you buy a cemetery, sorry, great um, a reception. I can't Okay.